You guys want to check out something cool that you can do for your stream now? Isn't that freaking amazing? Hey, what's going on guys? So I wanna show you something really cool today. Last week I made a video on how to create your own animated stinger transition. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend you check that out first. This video is gonna be really similar, but in my opinion, this is way, way, way cooler. Like you guys have no idea how long I've been waiting for something like this to come out. So let's say for example, you're playing a game like Apex Legends and you're playing your game, you got your game up and you got your webcam up. And now all of a sudden a squad just comes and just completely annihilates you. So in frustration, you switch from your scene that just has your game and you just want to talk to chat now. So you just switch to another scene that has your webcam. Normally in OBS, what happens is you just switch scenes and none of your sources move and that's really boring. But what if you wanted to animate your camera? So you want your small webcam to expand and grow and to be that full screen webcam. Or what if you wanted to animate your webcam from the top left of your screen to the bottom of your screen. All of that is now possible with a plugin called Motion Effect. So if you wanna see this in action, follow me on my Twitch stream. I've been showing this off to my chat for like the past month and I'm just in love with this thing. So we're gonna go through and show you how you can set this up for your own stream. But if you're new to the channel and you're a new streamer, make sure to subscribe to this channel. We do all sorts of videos like this one and I got way more videos planned in the future. Okay, so Motion Effect. Let's get the setup for you. First thing you're gonna wanna do is go into the first link in the description box down below. There's gonna be a link to where you can get the motion effect plugin. Once you have the zip file, you're gonna go to your OBS Studio installation folder, unzip the contents right into that folder, and that's basically it. Do note though, if you are using Streamlabs OBS, it does not work for Streamlabs OBS. It only works for OBS Studio. So if you're using Streamlabs OBS, then I guess, uh, don't? That's a topic for another video, but we'll cover that later. Now, once you've done that, you can open up OBS Studio. And if you've installed everything correctly, you're gonna see two new options. I don't know why I said two, and then I counted one in my hand. Two, two, two options. The first option is to add a new scene transition, which is gonna be called motion effect. And the second is going to be by adding a new effect filter to each of your scenes. We're gonna go through both options, but the one that's most important is that first option, which is to add a new scene transition. So let's talk about option one. So option one, you're gonna to wanna to go to where your scene transitions are and click on the plus sign and add a motion effect. Once you've done this, you'll notice immediately that when you change scenes, stuff will start animating, but might not look perfect. Let me explain how this works. Let's say you've got two scenes. We're, we're just gonna call them scene A and scene B. So scene A is gonna be the starting scene and then you're going to be transitioning into scene B. Here are the rules you got to follow. First rule, if a source exists on scene A and scene B, then that source is going to be animated between scenes. If a scene only exists on scene A but doesn't on scene B, then it's going to zoom out. And finally, if a source doesn't exist on scene A, but it does on scene B, then you'll get a zoom in effect. So I'm gonna make sure my editor puts in how each of these three transitions looks like. I edit my own videos, so. Now a few things to watch out for if you want this to animate correctly. First, make sure your sources are using the no bounds bounding type. If you don't do this, it's not gonna look right when you do your scene transition. Second, make sure you're using the same positional alignment between scenes. So if you have a webcam on one scene that has a top left positional alignment, make sure it also uses a top left positional alignment on the second scene. Three, you can only use a source once per scene. If you have a scene that has say two of the same webcam, I don't know why you do that, but two of the same webcam, it's not gonna work. And then finally, the way that you order your sources in your scenes matters. If you have your webcam above your game capture in one scene, make sure your webcam is also above your game capture on the second scene. If you don't do this, you're gonna have this weird thing where your webcam kind of clips through your game capture and you don't want that. Cool. Simple rules to follow. Make sure you do all of that. Now, the only other thing you should know is that you can also change the acceleration in the properties. So instead of it just doing like a linear transform between scenes, you can have it actually speed up a bit or slow down. It's up to you. 
do what you want. And you can also change the duration if you wanna make the transition faster or slower. All right, let's talk about the second option. So remember in the first option, we talked about three different ways that a source can be animated. You can have it move from one position to another, or you can have it zoom in or zoom out. But what if you wanted to have something like, say, you wanna have your face cam slide in from the side, and then maybe on a hotkey, you wanna have your webcam slide out. That is what you would use this second option for. So the way this option works works is by right clicking on any of your scenes, going to filters and adding a new motion filter. Make sure you do this on the scene and not the sources. It doesn't work in the sources because it's actually your scene that holds the position for each individual source. And then you're gonna wanna select the source that you want to animate. So in this example, let's just say we wanna move our face cam. Down in the next dropdown box, you'll see the trigger behavior. So we've got hotkey one way, hotkey round trip, and scene switch. Hotkey one way would be something like you'd wanna press a button and then your camera will move from one position to another. And then when you press it again, it'll go right back to the start and do the whole thing again. Hotkey round trip would be if you would wanna move your webcam from one position to another, and then you press the hotkey again, and then it reverses that motion. And then finally scene switch will be triggered every time the selected scene becomes active. Now the variation type does pretty much exactly what do you think it does? If you want to change just the position of that source, then select position. If you want to change just the size, then select size. And if you want to change both, say you want to grow your webcam, then you select size and position. Position and size. Sorry, can't read. Now, if you're using one of the hotkey options, you're going to want to turn on custom starting setting. I don't know why this isn't on by default, but basically this just tells you where the animation starts from. And then pretty much you just want to put in the coordinates of where you want that source to start and finish. Just make sure you leave the motion path on linear. Don't select quadratic Bezier curve or cubic Bezier curve because that that's just whack. All right, fine. I had to Google how to say Bezier because I've never seen that before. Now there is a button there that you can use that says populate destination with current source position. You're supposed to be able to use that button so that you can just click on it and then whatever position that source is in, it'll just automatically fill in the fields for you. But there's no button there for the starting position. So I don't know what that's about. Then finally, of course, you can set your duration and your acceleration. Now if you're using one of the hotkey options, just make sure you go into the settings and hotkeys in OBS and bind that to a hotkey on your keyboard. And uh, that's pretty much it. You just gotta rinse and repeat for every single source that you wanna have animated. So uh, yeah, those are both options. Um, I'm probably gonna show like a montage of how my stream looks. Now it's pretty simple once you just follow the rules that I've laid out. And you can actually use a combination of both options that I showed you to make something that's super, super complex. So go out there, do something super crazy. Just give your viewers something interesting to look at. It's gonna make your stream stand out from so many other people who just have boring transitions. But uh, yeah, that's the motion effect plugin. Make sure you go tell people all about this plugin. This is my new favorite plugin. Go tell your friends, go tell your family, go tell your coworkers, tell your boss, tell your local priest, tell everyone. I want everyone to know about this plugin. So leave a comment down below. Let me know, was that easy to follow? Was it difficult? Did I leave something out that I should have put in? I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you guys have any other questions about stream setups, maybe you've watched my Twitch stream and there's something there that you thought looked different, let me know and I might make a video about it. You're also free to join the Discord. I'm trying to be more active. So if you have questions, I'm, I'll check there. That's gonna do it for this video. Go out there and make your stream look fly as heck and I will see you next time.